Hey guys, welcome back. And today in a different environment, this is basically the new studio I'll be hopefully filming uh, quite a bit uh, going forward. It's been since March since I ordered my new rifle, which is the Desert Tech MDRX. Now the MDRX showed up uh, about two weeks ago, but it was missing a barrel or the conversion kit. Uh, you can see there's no ejector in here, no barrel. Uh, so the chassis showed up, but I was missing the barrel. Now, just recently, I did finally get my conversion kit. So it's a 308 uh, MDX conversion kit, comes with the, the barrel, comes with the ejector, and then also the bolt carrier. I, would, I don't know if you call it a bolt carrier group in this case, at least uh, it is the bolt uh, and the firing pin in there. Uh, now you guys probably saw something. What is that funny thing on top of the MDRX? That is a six hour Echo 3. It's a reflex side type thermal. At least that's how it's advertised. You can see the SIG logo right there. The base zoom level on this one is 1X, making this a better choice for short range kind of hunting scenarios. Let's say you're going through the woods and these kind of things. Um, a 2X just limits your field of view. Um, so 1x is actually a, a really good choice. It allows you to detect animals and target species at short range. Um, I have been playing around with it just off the back porch at the range. And I was looking at the tree line and the feet at 180 yards and I was quite surprised to be honest that I was able to uh, make out the, the feeder on the thermal. Now is that why, why I acquired this, this site? No, I would not shoot. 180 yards. I'm expecting uh, using this in a real world kind of scenario, I would be probably shooting uh, under 100 yards. So that's what this is really for uh, close distance kind of hunting, especially obviously on feral hogs here in Texas. It runs off two CR123 batteries. You can see the two ports in the front. There's an uh, USB port in the back. I need to look into um, if you could hook up, for example, an external battery supply or um, what else that hookup is for. Uh, I think at a mini very minimum probably to also update the firmware and so forth in that side. Uh, on top of the regular um, controls on this unit like uh, thermal uh, color palettes and so forth, brightness, contrast, some uh, thermal sensitivity, you can also record photos and videos. So that's kind of uh, fun and something that definitely I can use. Um, right now I have it set to record video. If I push that little control knob to the right, and then you can set the amount of um, seconds uh, each video should be. So it's something you set um, pre-configure in the settings. Let's say you would do a minute. It would record one minute. You see a little countdown. And once that countdown is over, um, you would have to record a new video. But let's get back to the MDX. Now to install that barrel, we have to unlock the barrel lock right here. It's 180 degree rotation. You're gonna have to take the handguard off. There's a takedown pin here and then two Torx one on each side, loosen the Torx, take the takedown pin out, and then we should be uh, able to insert that barrel. Now, that pin has been rather stubborn for me, so I'm gonna use a, a roll pin punch here and a makeshift hammer because I don't have my gunsmithing tools here yet, at least not complete, there we go. So now those Torx. There we go, okay. So loosen them, okay. Yeah, basically that's a M-lock mechanism as far as I can see here. All right. Handguard is off. Uh, we have the bolt lock in the unlock position, which means we should be able to insert that barrel in here. There we go. Now this goes in, slides all the way in. There we go. Now lock that barrel lock again. Yep. Okay, barrel is installed. Now we need to get the uh, 762 eject chute in there and you can see there's some brass and there's a, a test for it 
and also we have the uh, bolt we need to get in. For that I believe we'll have to um, remove the lower receiver at least to take that pin out so we can uh, move it apart. My bad, there's another detect on pin back here. So we have a total of four then. So I took those two takedown pins out here, the, the middle one on the back, leave the one in the front in. But now what I realized, this one in the bag was a little iffy. So without pulling it all the way, it actually caught the inside a little bit and didn't allow me to open this. Now I think to work on this most effectively, I'm going to remove the front pin too, otherwise it's going to be a little bit awkward. Having to deal with the uh, hinge mechanism here. Same thing here was just uh, stuck still. There we go. Right, lower receiver, upper receiver, and I believe we are doing some work up here. Yeah, getting that bolt installed. And after a little back and forth, I was able to get that bolt in here. Um, it is fairly intuitive, just had to figure things out. Uh, so you have to remove that pin in the back here, uh, remove that top uh, stopper, I don't know how you want to call this. Uh, I'm missing the technical terms here, guys, I'm sorry. But you, you pull this out, um, put the bolt in, put that back in, the firing pin has to come out first too, and then you put it back together. So fairly straightforward. Uh, then you insert that assembly again in the upper receiver, like so. And then the uh, ejector has to go in, goes in my case on the left side, because I'm a right-handed shooter. And then the ejector chute goes on the other side. like so, and then the upper receiver is basically back together. Now, joining it again with the, the lower receiver, uh, three takedown pins, one in the back, then the middle one. For those I'm gonna improvise. There we go, all the way in. And then the handguard, one takedown pin, and then two torques. And then with the MDX, uh, you will fit PMAX, and you get a PMAX, a 20 round, uh, with your MDX inserted like this. Then you have two uh, MAG release options. You have one in the front, uh, close to the trigger guard, and then you have one right in front of the mag well here in the back. Push that comes out too. Uh, obviously we'll have to shoot this a little bit for these buttons to function a little better. It's still very stiff. Now my MDX, I am going to pair with a Sandman S, so Dead Air Sandman S and FDE. That FDE version uh, came out just recently. Um, I'm getting it from my friends back here in the wall. So I'm pretty excited about that, keeping the FTE's color scheme going with that MDX, and then also another suppressor from Dead Air for me. Now, it's gonna take a few weeks for me to get that. I am an SOT, so I, I don't have the wait time um, as uh, you might have, uh, even though with the e-forms now coming out for the Form 4, supposedly we're looking at a 90-day wait time to get your uh, ATF form approved, which is pretty fantastic compared to where we are coming from. Um, now I want to shoot this rifle here right now uh, because I've been waiting for this for quite some time and uh, I can't wait to get some rounds through this. 
I'm going to shoot it unsuppressed and I'll be using something I, I had sitting around for quite some time and I, I haven't gotten really a chance to use it yet. But those are the Axel uh, GS Extreme or Ghost Strike Extreme. Those are in ear hearing protection, um, have Bluetooth. I probably need to charge these first, but I heard really good things about them. So I'm going to be trying that out. I usually have some issues with, well, it's probably because my ears are just weird, I don't know, but uh, with in-ear uh, headphone uh, style devices. Um, you name it, any of the big uh, phone manufacturer have their own kind of like Bluetooth earbuds and so forth. And usually don't, they just don't stay in there very good for me. So I'm wondering what my experience is going to be with them. Uh, these, these seem to have three sets of uh, in-ear rubber pieces, they go on those those little parts. Uh, so I'm hoping that with that variety somehow, my weird ear canal somehow is uh, being handled properly. So I have a little USB cable, so I'm going to be plugging them in here real quick, charge them for a few minutes, and then I'll see you guys outside at my half-finished shooting range. All right, I got the PMAC loaded up. Uh, I'm gonna be. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't go up there, it goes back here. It's something to get, get used to. How do you hold this? What's the best? Do you switch arms? No, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. Pointing down, in like this, maybe? Okay. I do have the XL GS Extreme in. Right now, I have the medium-sized earpieces on there. My right ear usually is where I have some issues. Right now I can also feel the right one it is just a little looser than the left side. I don't know if my ears are a different size, different ear canal maybe, left and right. I don't know, I have to figure it out. Might maybe switch the right one to large, see what it does. But that's why I usually like the over ear better because it's not such a hassle. Again, I always had issues with in-ear headphones and so forth. Now let's see what that echo does. It's not sighted in, so I'm not sure where I'm gonna hit. I think I'm at about 30 yards here or something like that. So let's just, let's just see what happens. Nope, I'm gonna switch over to over ear. This is not working for me, sorry guys. Over ear hearing protection. The in ear, I couldn't make it work. Again, my right ear is weird and then uh, trying to aim that right ear would interfere with the buttstock and would come up. But without further ado, I think I'm ready to put something down range. Very first time with the MDX. Put one in the chamber. All right. Ready to go. All right, I'm a little low. Yeah, we're 10 inches or so low, so I'm gonna probably adjust a little bit now. All right, I'm gonna have to use a thermal target in order to be able to tell where I'm hitting for the proper side in here. But first impression shooting the MDX, definitely a little bit of a different experience. Having the bullpup design. I haven't had any interference with my beard, so I didn't, didn't notice anything here. 
but uh, yeah it's and again shooting unsuppressed I've been shooting suppressed as far as I can remember so I'm looking forward to shooting the suppressed with the Sandman S on there from Dead Air um, yeah I just like suppressed shooting better Very fun shooting though, and not having any issues in terms of failures to load or anything like this, so this seems to be working out good. And out. But that's it for now, guys. Desert Tech MDX. First impression shooting. I like it. I don't like the, the noise level of it. I. Like, that's just unsuppressed shooting. I guess I get spoiled shooting suppressors over the years. But yeah, I'm gonna slap a Dead Air Sandman S on it. Uh, coming from Silencer Shop here in the next two weeks, hopefully. You guys see behind me here or next to me is the uh, Dead Air box. This is actually the Dead Air Sandman S and uh, it comes in FDE and that's the reason why this is now called the Sandman S military contract. So the, the FDE version of the Sandman S uh, originated from a military contract. That's why it has the, the designation of military contract. Um, now this is my second Dead Air can. The first one you guys can see here behind on the wall, which is a Dead, Dead Air Nomad Ti. I do have a bit of a history with the suppressor because ultimately this thing uh, lost its front cap and blew up in the front twice for me. So I had to send it back to Dead Air twice to get it repaired. The, the second repair after, you know, we escalated this a little bit with um, uh, Dead Air and Mike Papas. Um, he was all, all in and uh, very forthcoming. Uh, ultimately, this thing got repaired, um, and now I can shoot my 300 blackout uh, supersonic without having any issues with the suppressor whatsoever. However, those two suppressors couldn't be uh, more different. Ultimately, this thing here weighs in at 17.7 ounces versus the Nomad Ti, which comes in at 9.6 ounces. So there's a significant weight difference. That is due to obviously the material. Nomad Ti has it in the name. This is a titanium can versus the Sandman S um, is made out of stainless steel and then the baffles are made of stellite. So um, weight difference, significant. Lengthwise, we're talking about 6.5 inches on a normal TI and then 6.8 inches on the Sandman S. Now the weight difference has consequences. Uh, while I like the normal TI for its lightweight uh, on the uh, 300 Blackout SBR, uh, ultimately, a gun uh, I put together for uh, the running gun scenarios. We have um, a Holosun reflex sight on top. We have uh, a light and laser combination below. This whole thing is also an SBR uh, with the, the folding stock on it. So it's a very short, compact um, uh, setup. However, the weight difference comes with the cost. And the cost is the ultimately the full auto rating. The normal TI is not rated for full auto. The Sandman S is rated for limited full auto, which means certain calibers you can run full auto versus other calibers not. Now, speaking of calibers, both suppressors are rated up to 300 bin mag, so that's very similar, but again, Sandman S uh, can support full auto for some calibers. Now, I don't have a full auto setup, uh, meaning that this is really not relevant for me. Um, both suppressors I could uh, use on, on my uh, 30 caliber rifles. Now let's go ahead and get the Sandman S uh, installed. Uh, I already switched out the muzzle device on the MDX. It came with a, a muzzle device already, but uh, for the Sandman S, and that's also the difference between the Nomad Ti and the Sandman S, which is the quick disconnect. So the quick disconnect, you get a QD adapter, you put it in the front of your rifle versus the Nomad Ti uh, is a direct threat suppressor. Part of the package is a shim kit, which actually I like quite a bit. This is a, a nice kit. 
you have th three different uh, thicknesses. Uh, the nice thing is that these are actually marked, so the thinnest one has one notch, the uh, second thinnest one has two notches, and the thick one, since it's only one, it's very easy to identify, doesn't have any notches. In terms of the QD adapter, um, with the Sandman S, it only can go on one way. So you will uh, align your suppressor that your ports are sideways, so the blast goes out on the side. You have some small ports on the top, and then the bottom uh, is all, all the way closed, meaning that if um, you shoot unsuppressed, uh, there's no blast going, going uh, down, meaning that you won't um, throw up any dust and so forth if you shoot close to the ground. Now, I mentioned there's three notches or three lugs on the, on the adapter. Um, there is a little notch on the top, so you can easily recognize where the top is. It only goes on this one way, so align the notch with the top of the quick detach adapter and now you're on. If you try to do this the other way, so let's turn it a uh, quarter turn to the right, it doesn't want to go on. So you can try this all the way around until the notch is back on the top and now it goes on. In terms of uh, securing the, the uh, suppressor to the can, uh, you grab the tube clockwise about three quarters of a turn, a half a turn, I believe, and now your suppressor is um, secured. Now, in terms of the weight of the suppressor, it being 17.7 ounces, um, in terms of the balance of the rifle, the bulb pup, uh, quite heavy in the, in the back. Um, the barrel obviously uh, equals it out a little bit, but now sight and suppressor, I feel like this is a pretty pretty balanced setup. Yeah, this feels good. This doesn't feel doesn't feel front heavy. Yeah, I like it. I'm all dressed for the outside. I got my beanie on and my awesome, awesome silencer shop sweater. Thank you guys for that. So let's go outside. Uh, the range is 90% done. Uh, I've worked on that the past few weeks, so I added quite a bit of dirt. I um, added uh, railroad tires on the outside. Connected us through with a one, a one inch, one and a quarter inches rebars. So those railroad ties are pretty, um, pretty solid and structurally sound. I would say at this point, the uh, the berm is probably about six feet tall. Uh, I do want to add some height to it uh, for safety reasons, but I think for now uh, this range is ready to go. I really wanted to uh, wait for the suppressor to show up because ultimately. Um, once you add a suppressor to an unsuppressed rifle, there is a bit of a point of impact shift. So I didn't want to mess around uh, too much, trying to get the side sided in without a suppressor. But now having the suppressor, uh, now we're ready to go. So I want to take this outside, uh, get my thermal uh, target up to, and then see if we can get this uh, side sided in. I would probably try to do that 50 yards um, for the side in process, the zeroing process and then just confirm what it looks like at 100 yards in case I do want to take some shots out, out to that range too. Uh, you do have a zoom on it, but um, I don't anticipate me using the zoom uh, much. One, I believe that uh, it's kind of awkward to maneuver. There's only one control on here. This is a little knob. Uh, it's a multifunction uh, control. So I'm thinking the majority of my use will be in the base magnification, which also gives you the best image because now you're getting the full resolution of that thermal sensor versus when you zoom in, it's a digital zoom. So you're reducing your amount of pixels you're looking at. So ultimately, the more you zoom in, the bigger the pixel is and the lower quality image you have. Enough talking, let's go outside and send some rounds down the range. All right, very first test for the Dead Air Sandman S military contract, which means FDE. I'm going to fire up the Zigzag Echo 3. I have my thermal target on there. It's a two, two feet by one feet uh, plastic tile. Basically, it's a one inch thick uh, tile uh, that shows up your impact very nicely. They stay hot and you can see where you're hitting. I also have my steel targets next to it, but we are at 25 yards right now. I'm going to start, start small. Uh, let's go into the zeroing process, a little bit of a learning curve here also, because I'm definitely used to ATN's zeroing process. So pretty focused image right here. 
uh, let's keep it real. I'll be starting with FMJs because to get this zeroed in, I don't need to waste my barns hunting rounds. So I'm gonna get it on basically pretty close to the bullseye with the FMJs and then we'll be uh, switching it over to uh, the Barnes Vortex uh, 308, 150 grain. Let's get this started. Inserting that hex mag, putting one in, and then I'm going to loosen this tripod. Okay, going hot guys. First time shooting the Dead Air Sandman S military contract FDE with the Desert Tech MDX. I did not hit the tile, so I'm going to try to see if I can figure out the impact on the in the dirt pile. Let's switch over to the steel targets, see how that goes. I think I'm heading left, so I'm going to aim going offset to the right just to confirm. Yes, so I'm hitting left and low, so I'm going to adjust my reticle now. So there's one thing I don't like about this zeroing process on the 6R Echo 3, which is when you move your reticle to the point of impact, you don't have the original coordinates. So you don't see where where you're coming from, so it makes it kind of hard to adjust. You would have to, or maybe there is, there, is there a dot? No, I don't see a dot. So it makes it very hard to move. Um, it would be nice to get the original coordinates uh, marked. So there's some feedback probably for XR. And I'm going to SHOT Show next week, so if they're there, I might as well talk to them. So now I adjust it. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see how this looks on the target. Safety off. Oh, it's actually pretty close. Just a little bit to the left, still. So I'm going to adjust this one more time. Let's try this. And then the, the vertical adjustment, I'm going to move back to 50 yards and then uh, adjust the vertical. Yeah, so vintage is good. Elevation we'll do back here. Now the one thing, and when I shared the news of my now complete MDRX is that with the rest of the crew from Texas Yacht, the first question I get from Jen is how the trigger feels. So it's definitely not as you know crisp as an AR trigger like you would expect maybe from a CMC trigger or the uh, uh, ATC Gold uh, American triggers, which I now am having on the Rome rifle, but also on a new 300 Blackout build I'm doing right now. Um, not as crisp, so you have quite a bit of a of a uh, way to go here. It's not the not the greatest of all triggers, but it's all good. Yeah. Now, in terms of uh, sound suppression. It's definitely a lot quieter, uh, obviously. Is it as quiet as shooting my ROM rifle uh, AR-10 308? No, it's not. Uh, it definitely is louder than that. But for now, I mean, a lot quieter, much more comfortable to shoot compared to uh, where we came from uh, just about a week ago. So 50 yards, definitely a much smaller image because we had 1x magnification. So I'm now zooming in a little bit 
and uh, actually let me hit record because it's XR Echo 3 does record video. There we go, 60 second video starting. Zooming in, I can see the uh, tape on the target. Let me try to get the right there in the crisp picture. Safety is off and I'm not wearing my gloves and I can feel that cold wind. Let's see where we are ending up with um, the 25 yards here right now. So definitely high, so I'm going to move that reticle a little bit, adjust it, and record in the scope, and setting another shot down range. All right, so now I'm low. And that's exactly the problem here, uh, not seeing the origin. It makes it really hard to figure out how much you need to move. I guess I could, um, because I'm using this tripod, uh, this is not very accurate, so, yeah, no, I don't know how you would be able to tell. So, moved it, trial and error. Definitely not that uh, one shot zero process ATN has, where you can see the origin reticle, and uh, it makes the searing in your rifle Technically, it could be one shot. So some say it's not one shot. Well, you technically you could do that in one shot. You take one shot, if it's somewhere in the paper, you adjust your reticle, and technically you're on, on paper, uh, you're on bullseye. So this one shot gets you, should get you to bullseye. But obviously you want to take another shot to confirm, and then you do some more shots in different uh, distances to confirm that um, at those distances uh, you're good to go to. So adjust it. Let's take another shot and see where we are. So I'd say we're pretty much on target at 50 yards. Barnes Vortex 308 factory rounds or factory loads. So let's let's take take a look uh, where the uh, where those are hitting. Burns Vortex, 150 grain. It might be a little high, so I might want to adjust it uh, just slightly. And out. No, I think we're good. I was taking a few more shots just to confirm that first or the one of the first shots, which was a little high, uh, is indeed where it's hitting, but it came back down. So I think it was just not as stable. So we got it at 50 yards. Um, I'm not going to take it back just to 100 yards and uh, take a few shots, see where we are landing. Probably just do the uh, the steel plates, make sure I can hit the steel plate from back there. But uh, I think with that, this rifle would be ready to um, put some feral horse into the ground. So I think it would be the next step and hopefully the next video uh, to show you guys taking the MDX out some bit on the brush and hopefully getting in some hogs. I'm excited because I'm going to SHOT Show next week. Uh, so interest is to see what's coming new from the industry and maybe I'll touch base with six hour there if they're open to customer feedback which I hope they are. Thanks again guys for watching I appreciate you guys checking back in and uh, I'll be back. Oh thank you guys for checking in again let's look at that awesome weapon there let's put some rounds down there in there and the, the magazine valve and just shoot the target down there a little bit. Fantastic!
That steel plate is dead. Jawohl. Alright, let's get to the chopper. Things you do for YouTube.